the author of Heaven's Magic Bubble Machine, T.L. Yuki, joining us on This Week in America. T.L., Terry, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate you having me on your show this morning. This is such an important topic and a message so well delivered in the book, Heaven's Magic Bubble Machine. What was the inspiration for you to, to write a book for grieving children? My inspiration probably started when I was a child and my mother was uh, died from an accident when I was 12 years old. And my brother was 10 and my little sister was six and there was three of us still at home at that time. And as I grew up, I started seeing other families that were going through the same thing that our family went through when they were grieving, when we were grieving a loss uh, that was just devastating to our life. And I made a decision a long time ago that someday I wanted to do something to help children that were grieving. It took me a long time to figure out what I wanted to do or how I was going to do it, but I think a germ, germination was in my brain that wanted me to write a book so that children could hold it in their hands and have lots of colorful pictures and a happy message. And I, I did everything I could to make the book a happy book about a subject that is very difficult for children to deal with. I would guess that for a lot of children, it's, the, it's probably the, as a child, one of the most devastating things that they will ever go through. And I just wanted to bring a smile to their face and give them some comfort and give them an outlet so that they could feel some connection to the people that they love that have gone to heaven. And um, as you mentioned, the main character is Tommy and his dog Milo. He is suffering from uh, the grief, but throughout the book, because we're dealing with a positive message, he's able to channel his grief in a healthy way by sending the magic bubbles back to heaven to his grandma because all it takes to send the magic bubbles is love and a wish when you're blowing your bubble and it goes back to heaven. And um, I've had feedback from uh, people that have given it to children that have lost their grandparents or even their siblings or parents. And the children actually woke up one morning, one little girl in particular, and she woke up one morning and she had a you know, like red cheeks. Yes. And yes. Her, her mom says, oh my gosh, you have a rash on your cheeks. Let me put some cream on it. And the little girl says, oh no, mommy, that's okay. Grandma kissed me last night with a magic <laughs> bubble, so that's why my cheeks are rosy this morning. So that was probably one of the most inspiring things that I've heard is that uh, it really did help a child. So I feel that um, I can contribute something to helping children deal with their grief in a positive and healthy way. Using the magic bubble machine, I love this connection. It's sort of a two-way connection between Grandma and between uh, Tommy and Milo and everybody here. Where did this idea for a magic bubble machine come from? Well, you know, that's an interesting question because when I first started jotting down ideas for the book, I just kept a notepad and every time an idea would come, I would write it down. And this went on over several year period. And I had the characters and I had the mom and the dad and I had the type of illustrations in my mind that I wanted to use. I wanted to be very colorful. I wanted a book that kids could hold and just keep going through it and a hard copy so that it was strong and they could lend it to their friends and things like that. And I knew I wanted an activity for them to participate in to help them have fun with the, the, it, the situation in communicating back to heaven through love. And I, I couldn't come up with the activity. And I made a list and I had my family helping me. I had friends helping me. And I, I had already hired a company to help me produce the book. And they were already coming at me for information to give them. And I really didn't have the activity sounds strange but this is exactly what happened i i just remember sitting at my desk thinking you know i'm so stressed out because i'm not able to come up with this activity i'm going to do something that i've heard so many people say and that's just ask the universe to provide me the <laughs> when the time is right and that's truly what i did and i said from this moment i am not going to worry about this anymore i just i have to have faith that the answer is going to come to me so one day i was working in the kitchen and I was washing dishes and as I'm washing dishes the word bubbles popped into my head 
And I, I didn't connect it to anything. I just thought it had to do with my dish soap. And then later that day or the next day, I'm sitting at my desk and I'm doing something and the word bubbles popped into my head again. And I thought, that's really odd. I, I don't know why I'm thinking about bubbles. And, and then just maybe an hour later, the word bubbles popped into my head and I could visualize big colorful letters, you know, purple and green and yellow with the, the visualization of the word bubbles. And I still couldn't figure out what happened. And then all of a sudden I said, oh my gosh, this is the answer. I wanted an activity that was wholesome and healthy and safe, something every kid could afford, really afford to do. Bubbles aren't expensive, they're magical. Everybody loves bubbles. Kids love bubbles. Animals love bubbles. Adults love bubbles. And I thought, you know, this is the perfect answer. So I didn't really have the bubble machine itself in mind initially. But as I came up with the bubble, or the bubble idea was provided to me, actually, then it all evolved. And I was able to come up with the bubble machine idea. And then I, you know, had my family help me with the creation of the ideas. And I wanted to be a very... You know, my husband said, we want this bubble machine to be really, you know, important and lots of gadgets and lots of activity. And it just fit into my idea of making it a fun book for children. And it worked out very well. I, I, I really feel that the uh, illustrations uh, really, really helped make the book. And they're fun to look at. I mean, they're fun. I wanted animals and babies and grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles. Everybody's involved with the bubble machine. It's just wonderful. I, I really had a fun time. The illustrations add so much to it. You've got the colors, you've got the, uh, the the pictures that draw your attention and they add to the story. So as you're reading the story or reading the story to a child, they've got the visualization that they, they can see the concept of what you're doing. And I love the magic bubble machine they get us all figured out how to turn it on, then they have problems turning it off. So there, there are escapades that come about with the the magic bubble machine as, as they're going through this process of trying to figure out how how to return the bubbles. We're talking about heaven here, Rick. You know, they have lots of help. They can figure out anything. <laughs> it's such a charming book. It's been talked about as a book that's a, a definitely. Uh, nighttime to read to the, to read to the child. It's a book that they suggest uh, story time in school, even libraries, because it's a great message, and it's yeah. such an important message that you're getting to the child. How many children out there do you believe are in situations like you were when you grew up that losing a loved one like you did? I started doing a lot of research when I knew I was going to come up with uh, a book to help children, and I was surprised that. One in 20 children, uh, one in 20, which is a lot of children, yes. suffer the loss of uh, a death of an immediate family member. That's father, mother, and sibling. I assume grandmother would be the first, but it isn't. It's the father, mother, and then the, the sibling, and then the grandmother comes after that. And that's that's a pretty large percentage, and that's not including not immediate families. You know, there's going to have friends that have deaths and there's going to be accidents of other uh, other um, family members and friends, but this is strictly immediate family members. And, and that's a lot of children. And those children, you know, say they suffer a loss of a sibling, the family's still going to have other children that are there. So when they do suffer a loss, it's not just the child that's suffering the loss. It's the whole family unit that's suffering the loss and everybody's going to be dealing with their own issues. So that's why it's really important for us as a society and people that are friends and family of these people that are suffering to be there to help them and help them get through this process. If I hadn't had such a wonderful family with aunts and uncles and cousins, it would have been a lot harder for me. I was lucky. Maybe some of their kids aren't that lucky and and friends need to step in, neighbors. I mean, there's, it doesn't have to cost a lot of money to help people when they're going through difficult times. If, if bringing in their trash cans on trash day is just a very small thing, but somebody that had, knows somebody cared enough about them to do that, that's a big thing. And uh, we just need to let people know how much we care about them and that we're there to support them when they need it. 
I think when people do lose somebody like that, initially they don't really know what they need. So you offer support and, you, and if you say something like, just let me know, I'd be happy to help you. They're not going to come to you. You need to be a little more specific and contact them at a little bit later date. If Say it's you know somebody at your child's school that they lost their father or their mother or their sister. You know, offer the parents, you know, my son and your son are such great friends. They, you know, they're in soccer practice together. Let me know if you need me to bring your son home from school. We, I, we can even bring him back to our house and we'll fix dinner and have fun with him. They, it's good for the kids to be together because they enjoy each other so much. And so you're helping the child and you're helping the parent that's left or the grandparent that's left taking care of them by giving them a little break. Helping people doesn't necessarily have to cost money. And it doesn't. A lot of things don't cost money, but the thought that people want to be there for them is very important to them, particularly to children. Children need a connection and they need to know that they can talk to people and that people will listen to them. They just they just need reinforcement because, you know, it's a devastating time for children to go through losing their loved one. Talk about the challenges of doing this book. You've done such an excellent job of keeping this uplifting, keeping it positive, keeping a smile on our face. And people who've gone through situations can think of memories of, of loved ones who have, who have passed as well. Uh, what was the, the challenge to, to, to balance that, to get the, the message across that, yes, there is a loss, in this case, Tommy and Tommy's life and Milo as well, and keep it uplifting. You did an excellent job with that. How difficult was that? It was challenging, but I think because I took my time and didn't try to rush writing the book and I kind of let, I would come up with ideas and then I would walk away from it and I would come back and reread it. And I just kept focusing on, we need to make this fun. We need to make it happy. We need to make it uplifting. And I, I, I dealt with the acknowledgement that Tommy was suffering from grief. And, but I also, throughout the book showed how he had support and he had people that cared about him, people that understood him and all those things made it a positive experience. And in the end, it ended up being happy because he was, he was supported in coming up with his idea that if his grandma could send him loving bubbles from heaven, he could return them the same way. So it gave him an ability to come up with an idea, follow it through, and it, I think it empowered him. It made him feel like he had some, some control which allowed him to be, you know, channel his grief in a very constructive manner. Right. And that that's how I was trying to look at it. But I really didn't rush. I don't know how long it takes people typically to write books because this is the first one I've written. I, I am working on an outline for a, a sequel to Tommy's story. But I'm not going to rush that either because I, I because you have to keep going back and rereading it and and the, I and more ideas come after you put one sentence down then four ideas come later exactly so I think I think and I and because I could identify with Tommy and I've known people that have gone through situations like this maybe I, it was easier for me to do that because I could identify with it. So I think a lot of our experiences in life that we go through ultimately help us help other people down the road. And that's what I was trying to do. And this unique relationship between grandmother and grandchild, that's so fascinating to watch that and the impact that she had on on Tommy. A few minutes left in the program, but talk a little bit about that too, because that's a, that relationship is special, isn't it? Well, I'm sure that's special for most everybody, but it's particularly special for me because my mother didn't get to meet my children. And so when I had grandchildren, I just, I was so thrilled I couldn't see straight. I, I have, I only have two children. I've ended up having great wife, <laughs> eight great wonderful grandchildren. And I just love them to death. And I, I think that helped inspire me because when my oldest two grandchildren uh, lost their other grandmother, their dad's mother, they were only five and three. And I noticed what they went through and I was able to help them as well. And, I, and that may have helped me get, be uh, added to my inspiration to do the book because the five-year-old could sit and just hold her grandma's hand and 
she was just fine with it. She totally understood for some reason what was happening. The three-year-old suddenly realized that if somebody could die and disappear on her, that that could happen to a, you know, a lot of people in her family. Suddenly she was very scared. So it, depending upon their age, it also is going to depend upon the way they, they grieve or how they deal with their fears. So we were able to work with her too, and it, it, it all worked out, and they're adults now. But I, that, that probably helped me. And I, I just know how much I love my grandchildren, and I know how much my grandchildren have been loved by all the other people in their lives. So that part was relatively easy for me to do because I truly feel that love. And I, I know other people that give the same love to their grandchildren. So I, I like feeling like my uh, grandchildren can contact, send a bubble and send it to the grandma that they never met. <laughs> and I, I hope someday they do that. On the book. I can understand that. This is such a touching book. It's always interesting when you're reading children's books, you do such a nice job with the illustrations, as I mentioned. They're not overwhelming, they're colorful, they're pleasing, uh, it attracts your eye, it enhances the story. The vocabulary is so important as well. You've got it, and obviously spent a lot of time in doing that. Sometimes words are used that I'm not sure kids understand. Sometimes too many words are used and you lose the attention span of a young reader. Talk about going back and trying to perfect that. So you've got just the right words and words that, that are meaningful for the, for the child. Thank you. I worked hard on that. And one of the things I did is I printed off my manuscript from my computer and I had children read it. And I took it back when I visited my son. He has four children. I had them read it. I had my daughter-in-law read it. I had my son read it. I had my other grandchildren read it. And my daughter-in-law says, oh, this word's too big. Well, her four-year-old daughter read it, and she knew exactly what the word was. I don't even remember what the word was. But she says, oh, I'm surprised. I, I wouldn't have thought that she knows what that word means. So, yes, because I have so many nieces and nephews and grandchildren of my own, I think I kind of knew uh, the words to use for children, but that didn't stop me from having my grandchildren and other children read it too, before I ever had the book on it. You know, they were kind of proofreaders before the real proofreaders got it. So you got so your own little market true. research group there that uh, that would go through, <laughs> read, and give you advice. It, well. <laughs> it's nice to have that because that was that was the audience. It's I'll close with how I began. One of the reviews, and I think they sum it up perfectly. One of the most heartfelt children's books I've ever read. Absolutely perfect for children who have lost a loved one. And for adults as well. There's a lot there for everybody. As you're, you're reading the child, uh, the book, or reading along with the child, or reading to a group, uh, I mentioned in the library schools, that, that type of uh, situation. The book is Heaven's Magic Bubble Machine by T.L. Yuki, Y-U-K-I. Books available wherever books are sold. I'll send you to her website, which is heavensmagicbubblemachine.com. And remind you, you can link on directly by Terry. You mentioned working on a sequel. When do you think we'll have a chance to talk about that? I think it's my time, and um, I've already got some formulations in my mind on the, the main characters and the, the main plot. And it's actually, I think it's a, it's going to be as fun as Tommy. It's just a little bit different. It doesn't really deal with death. It deals with um, animals helping other animals, and Tommy is part of the part of the plot. And I, I it's going to be a very uplifting book as well. It just deals with a different subject. And well, maybe in a year and a half or so, well, I, I imagine. I don't know because it took me two years to write. <laughs> I was going to say, I asked that. I hesitated in asking because there's no pressure with that because patience works for you. It uh, It's really something that's part of your writing style. You take your time and you get it right, and it uh, it has a very impactful message when it, uh, the book reaches the marketplace. Terry, this has been so much fun. Excellent job with the book, Heaven's Magic Bubble Machine. Thank you for taking some time and uh, and spending with us talking about it on the program. It's been a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. T.L. Yuki, our guest, Y-U-K-I. The book is Heaven's Magic Bubble Machine. Our website, heavensmagicbubblemachine.com. And, of course, you'll find more information on our website this week in America.us.